the demand side of the economy and the supply side of the economy. Let's look at the equilibrium and see how they are they they reach at the equilibrium. So here we we'll look at the equilibrium as a state where demand and supply are equal. In economics, it's a general note that equilibrium is a situation where demand is equal to supply. So here there are other concepts of equilibrium. We we'll look at look at the equilibrium prices. This equilibrium prices is the prices that different commodities that uh, a, a consumer is willing to pay to the seller for the output he wants. That equilibrium price that in the market, this is the price of uh, demand, uh, the price of demand that equates to the price of supply. So the market equilibrium here will refer to the condition of market price. What the market price is, what the market price established for the buyers and the sellers. So at this point, the price, if there's equilibrium in the market, we say that the market has cleared. So we we'll call it market clearing price. So properties of equilibrium. Properties of equilibrium. In this particular properties of equilibrium, there are many ways some economists, some school of thoughts, used to explain the properties of economies. From here, we see that they are, we have the static, you have the, the dynamics. But there's something I want to understand. Let me summarize it in a simple way. The properties of equilibrium is just three. We have the, we have the uniqueness, we have the stability, we have the existence. That in the first place, the first question you will ask yourself is, does equilibrium exist? If equilibrium is existing, the next question you should ask, is the equilibrium one equilibrium or multiple equilibrium? So after that, whether it's a single equilibrium or multiple equilibrium, but we have ascertained that there is equilibrium. So the next question you should ask yourself is the equilibrium is stable. And the stability here is that there might be a divergence from the original equilibrium. But with the forces of uh, demand and supply, it will bring it back to the initial equilibrium as it was before. So from here now, the dynamic equilibrium we are talking about is that that the, we are told that, that the dynamic equilibrium adjusts the equilibrium from the old one to the new one. So Pasha. Okay, dynamic equilibrium. We've seen that in a static equilibrium, all quantities have changing values. They have, uh, they, they have changing values. Why in dynamic, the quantities are uh, varied? We know that static is something that is stable. In static equilibrium, that the unchanging values, they don't change, they are static. But in dynamic, the values changes. by George Stigley that partial equilibrium is one which is based on the restricted range of data. A standard example is the price of a single product that all other products being fixed, being held, are fixed during this analysis. That all products are fixed when we are talking about this uh, partial equilibrium. Assumptions of partial equilibrium. Commodity, commodity price is given and constant for the consumers. Here, we say that the commodity price is given. They have already fixed the price and it's constant. So there's no need for you to be bargaining to see if they can change the price for you. Here, the consumer taste and preference, uh, preferences, habits, incomes are considered to be constant. Before a consumer moves into the market to buy, he knows what he wants. He knows his taste. He knows what he prefers. He knows the particular product he prefers more than others, his habit, and he considers his income when taking decision. So, prices of this product that the factor of production helps in producing, and the prices and the price and the quantity of other factors are known and constant. That the prices of this product. 
know and they are constant. So general equilibrium theory. The general equilibrium theory is a branch of theoretical economics. This general equilibrium theory is a situation where the, the equilibrium the general equilibrium is taken for the whole economy, unlike the partial that we looked at the, the a particular market or a particular sector. But this one, for general equilibrium, it talks about the behavior of the whole economy at large. So, in summary, we study the general equilibrium theory as a branch of theoretical economics that looks at the general uh, economy while the 